What's going on you guys? Now before we get into today's video, I realized while editing, I missed out on one extremely important detail when you shoot expired film. Now this is for folks who have a point and shoot camera or camera that won't allow you to manually set your ASA. So the camera will read the uh, DX coding on the film canister. Now I didn't actually include how to manipulate that canister for your camera to read it differently in the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and link a video down in the description below uh, to a channel called Matt Gabriel and he does a beautiful, fantastic job of explaining how to manipulate your canisters and get these cameras to read your DX coding in a different ISO. So definitely check out his video if you have a point and shoot, that might be extremely helpful to you. So folks, go ahead and head over to his video, come back to this one and enjoy. Alright y'all, so I was sleeping, as you guys can hear I'm a little under the weather, but I was sleeping dreaming about a new camera that I got and the phone starts ringing, it goes buzz, buzz, buzz and I'm over here at 6 a.m. like what is happening and I'm like, hello? And they're like, hey yo JP, and I'm like, what's Gucci? And he's like, hey yo, your zines are ready for pickup. All right, at this point in time, you're probably wondering why I have two boxes, and let me tell you why. Now, the team inside of there is really chill, they're really nice, and they helped me out a lot, but, oh shoot, Jeff Burnout, shut up. I guess you could say it's kind of my fault too. I kind of sent them like four to five files of the same exact thing, and they all look very similar, but they have different names. You know, that's the first thing, but they printed out the wrong version of the zine. So, let me show you guys really quick. I have 50 zines of Finding Light, but this was the second version. This was the version that I didn't like because it was too damn bright right here. Right at the L, it was too damn bright. And so I was in the car looking at it just to, you know, make sure that the order was right and complete. And I realized, you know, the formatting wasn't correct. None of the photos were formatted in the in the order that I uh, last put it in. And the exposure of the images were really, really dark. And I was like, holy crap, dude. Knowing how chill they were and how awesome these, uh, this team is here at Staples, they went ahead and printed out another, another run of 50. So right here, sitting inside of this box, I have 50 of the actual zines. These ones right here, man, these are perfect. And I told them, I was like, you know what? You guys are amazing. They didn't charge me an extra penny. They didn't do anything else. I'm gonna get them all of them uh, packed up and then shipped out and then you guys will get your zines. So that's the story. Our zines are ready to go, folks. I'm super excited for you guys to see this. And man, it's been a process, but you know what? It's a process to enjoy. All right, you guys, so it's the next morning and I came down with a cold, I don't know how, but I'm not feeling too well, I got low energy levels, so this video might not be pretty, it's gonna be a really raw video, but uh, really quick, I have a ton of work to do. It's about 10 a.m. Uh, Staples finished up the second set of prints after they messed up on the first order. Uh, I also have a couple of prints that I need to send out. These are all the zine packaging, so I have to get addresses. Overall, it's gonna be a super hectic and busy morning. Later on in the day though, I have a portrait shoot around 5, 5.30, something like that, but I'm mostly gonna be shooting digital. But, I wanna bring along with me the Voigtlander Bessa R2 way. Now you guys know I got this camera and I've completely fallen in love with it, but I've always wondered how rangefinders perform in a portrait setting. Um, I've seen people do it before, I know professionals who've done this, and I kind of want to experience that firsthand myself. But I'm going to throw you guys off and show you guys how to shoot expired film. Give you guys some tips on what you can do, how to expose it correctly. And overall, you know, just try to cover the entire subject uh, in one go. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that today with the expired film and the Voigtlander Besta R2 way at that portrait shoot. But for the meantime, man, it's time to grind. Whew.
I got a good number of zines ready to be shipped out. Uh, not finished yet though, I still have this many left to do. Uh, but I'm going to take the R2A out and I'm going to show you guys where I store all of my film and show you guys the film we'll be shooting today. Alright, so folks, this is where I store all of my film. This is a little mini fridge. Now, I don't keep it in the main fridge that the family uses. Instead, I have my own separate fridge, which I highly recommend you guys do. And I picked this up off, off the thing Walmart for like 25 bucks. So it opens up here, and holy crap, <laughs> it's already spilling with film. Okay, so let me just take you guys down really quick and give you guys a tour. The colder part comes out of the top here, so this is where I store my expired goods. All of this stuff right here is, I think it's like Fuji Provia, some slide film that expired. John Wilkinson sent over. And then we have the stash, so here's a stash of HP5. We have the Fuji Superior Rolls, we got some 120 in there. What we're going to be shooting today though is Kodak Ultramax. Now, particularly this one right here expired in 2006. And so I'm going to show you guys exactly how I'm going to shoot this, uh, how we're going to go about it, and throw you guys into the action during the portrait shoot. All right, you guys, so we are going to go ahead and suit up for today's uh, portrait shoot. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to take with me. So first of all, uh, this is a bag a bag from Brevite, super dope camera bag company. If you guys want to purchase a bag, link in the, in the description. But I will make a full review on it, but I'm still testing it out. My main camera here is going to be the Sony a6000. Right now, I have an adapted Canon 85mm 1.8 with the Calm Light adapter. Um, I do use it in autofocus at some times, but most of the time it's manual focus with focus peaking on the a6000. I have a Mikey, Mikey. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same company as newer. Battery grip on here. That's the main setup that I'll be using today. Also, I'll be taking with me the Sony 15, I'm sorry, 35 millimeter 1.8 lens, super sharp lens, uh, about 85% of the time this is on the camera, as well as a flash. This is the newer Speedlight NW320, super compact flash for a compact system, which makes it perfect. So that's the digital setup I'm bringing. Yes, I know it's not that, <laughs> it's not that interesting, but as for film, like I said, I'm going to be shooting some expired Kodak Ultramax uh, 400. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I shoot this, as well as the Voigtlander Bessa R2A. And of course, I got the 35mm 2.5 color scope bar. It'll be an interesting experience for me as well, because I've never shot a portrait shoot with a rangefinder. So I'm going to go ahead and pack this up, and we'll be on our way. Alright you guys, so really quick, we're going to let the car warm up, but what I want to do really quick is talk to you guys about how you can shoot expired film. Now the important thing you need to note about shooting expired film is to overexpose it. That's all you need to do, that's a secret, overexpose your color film. Now if you guys have been keeping up with the YouTube videos, you know I made a video called, uh, you know, the one thing you should know about color negative film, and basically all that video was talking about was that it's better to overexpose color film, so don't be afraid when you're shooting this stuff to go ahead and overexpose it. This is Kodak Ultramax. 400 and this expired in 2006 all right so that's about that's more than 10 years no I was wrong it expired in 2016 so it's about two years old which is okay the number that's on the film canister here which is 400 um, is the speed of the film and remember how we talked about film over time loses its light sensitivity and so if it expires in 2016 at that point we should expect that there is a reasonable amount of uh, light sensitivity loss on the film strip and so what we have to do is we have to overexpose it so how do we do that well my rule of thumb is first of all if the film is anywhere between two to five years expired I go ahead and overexpose it by one stop we'll get to that later if it's more than five years maybe ten years then I go ahead and do two stops now because this film right here was expired in 2016 which is about only two years ago uh, we're only gonna overexpose this by one stop so instead of shooting it at 400 speed we're gonna go ahead and cut that in half and shoot it at 200 same thing for any other film if it's 800 speed film and expired between that two to five years overexpose it one stop and shoot it at 400 or for example let's say it's 200 speed film we need to overexpose that by one stop it's gonna be 100 so you kind of get to see the pattern there now how do you do that in camera what you can do is go ahead and take your camera here open up the back just like usual and then you're just gonna load the film in like normal nothing special here right all right now this is the important part 
you need to find your ASA dial. Okay, folks, so let me try to get this in focus. As you guys see here, the ASA dial on this camera is right on the shutter speed dial. Now, the only thing you have to do is instead of setting it at 400, remember we're overexposing it by one stop, we're gonna go ahead and set that to 200. So let me go ahead and do that first. And that's pretty much it. If you have an auto exposure mode, this is what the camera is gonna think it is. Uh, the camera will think it's 200 speed film, but make sure you guys, when you develop the film or when you send it over to develop uh, to a developing lab, you tell them that it's 400 speed or you tell them the original box speed because all you're doing right now is overexposing the film. And if your camera doesn't have any auto exposure modes, maybe it's a manual exposure camera, you gotta keep that in mind shooting at 200 ISO. So if you're using Sunny 16, instead of setting that 400 ISA speed to 1 500 of a second, you're gonna go ahead and set that to 1 250th of a second according to the 200 ASA. Or if you're gonna be using a handheld light meter, make sure to set the ASA overexpose one stop. For example, if it's 400 ASA, just like you would do it in the camera, set it to 200 and then go ahead and expose for that. Just remember, overexpose the expired film according to how many years it's been expired for. So that's how we do it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drive over and we're gonna start the portrait shoot and I'll show you guys the results that we get shooting expired film. <sighs> Yes, we did it folks, portraits with a rangefinder. Now, my experience on it is a little weird. First of all, it's weird because I'm so used to SLRs and seeing what you're gonna get before you take the shot. With a rangefinder, you know, you can frame within the frame lines, but other than that, you don't know what the depth of field looks like. You don't know exactly how um, each image is gonna look uh, right after you take it. And so you kind of got to take the word for it, but I feel like I've grown a little bit closer to this lens and I kind of know some of the uh, limitations and some of the things that it can do. Uh, but overall, it was a fairly pleasant experience. Now, before we go ahead and head out, folks, I want to talk to you guys really quick and just recap about shooting expired film. Now, remember, go off of the date that it was expired. So if it expired within the first year, you can still shoot that at box speed. That's still pretty much fresh. Anything past two years, two to five years, overexpose it by one stop, meaning at 400 speed, if you're gonna overexpose that by one stop, shoot it at 200. Or if you're at 1600 ISO, 
if that's the native film speed, go ahead and cut that in half and shoot it at 800. So essentially when you're overexposing it by one stop, you're taking half of the value and shooting at that. So another example is 100 ISO down to 50. Anything past five years, I generally would say overexpose it by two stops. And in that case, you're gonna do the same exact thing. 800 speed turns into 400 speed, that's one stop. 400 speed turns into 200 speed, which is two stops. So it goes on like that. And as long as you overexpose it, you know, with color negative film, you're gonna have a great latitude anyways. You'll pretty much be able to get some good results out of it. And like we discussed earlier, if you're gonna be using a handheld light meter, just set the ASA accordingly. Or if you have an auto exposure camera, uh, you're gonna find the ASA dial, which is the ISO, and then, uh, you know, do it on there. I have it also on the X700. It works for both rangefinder and SLR. You can shoot expired film in either. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it up, folks. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, or maybe you wanna suggest something, feel free to comment down below. Also, before we head out, I wanna announce that I made another Twitter. Now, I deleted my Twitter about two years ago just for some crazy random reasons. So if you guys wanna go ahead and follow me on there, I will give you guys updates, lifetime updates on what I'm doing, updates on giveaways and stuff like that. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter. It's the same thing as my YouTube, King Japes, and then you'll be updated. So that's gonna wrap it up, folks. Thank you for watching another King Japes video. As always, hit that subscribe button and drop a like down below. And you know what it is, Minolta Gang. Whew.